Hey everybody. I've been doing quite a bit of dry brushing and I uh, thought I would uh, share a little bit on this. Now, I know a lot of people have done stuff on dry brushing. Um, so, you know, if you've seen this before, don't waste your time. Um, if you want to uh, see what I do, um, stick around. Um, these are the pieces that I got from Joellen. These are aquarium, like resin pieces, and they are absolutely beautiful. And uh, I told Joellen that I would do a how-to on on uh, dry brushing. So this is kind of for her, but it's it's for everybody really. So I I got started. I don't know if that helps a little bit. I went through, I laid down a, uh, a khaki tan, and now I'm going over with uh, dry brushing it with, uh, I don't know if you can see it, Delta uh, Dream Coat, and it's um, sandstone. I have a little trouble finding it. I don't know if they're discontinuing that color or something. I might have to go to... Uh, Home Depot and have them make me a batch of this stuff. If you're ever going to do a lot of work, especially like I'm doing for Joellen, uh, you know, big cityscapes, that kind of thing, um, you uh, you really should think about going and picking up a, a quart of it. I don't think they'll make a pint. They think a pint's too small. Um, I'm giving this a, a pretty heavy dry coat brushing because I'm doing an entire city um, and the uh, pieces that she's utilizing are just single coat dry brush dry brushed I should say um, I'm going with a heavier uh, dry brush brushing coat or uh, pardon me I'm going with a lighter dry brushing coat normally I would run with about uh, two-thirds but because this project is so massive and I'm covering so much area um, I'm reducing that down to 50%. That's the best uh, percentage you can get when you're splitting two colors because um, you're gonna get an equal variety of both. And of course, you always wanna divide that up by the number of colors you're using. I mean, if you're using, let's say you're, you're going for like a, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like Golden Award we award-winning or demon winner type stuff and I mean they're they're crazy they do like 70 coats but I mean if you wanted to do something like that and go with say 10 coats each coat will cover 10% less when you get down to your final highlight coat it's only gonna be 10% of your total surface area that you're gonna be hitting um, and there's advanced techniques that you can mix in and out uh, with that um, you can uh, go back with the same color and depending on how you spread that color percentage wise it can uh, cause very unique subtle effects to occur and um, you know it's it's something it's it's an art form you play with it um, you can apply science to it but what it comes down to it a lot of it is just um your experience your technical skill level of which everybody that I seem to run across and teach has a higher skill level than I do they're just not as crazy as me I guess or love it as much I don't know what the deal is but uh, I love teaching I went to school to be uh, a teacher and so I take a lot of uh, a lot of pleasure in in, uh, in sharing with people so I guess they just, you know, some people receive well, some people are just plain old, horrendously talented, and um, whatever it is, that's a great thing, because I love to see people excel, especially at stuff that I love, you know, there's nothing greater than sharing what you love with, with someone else and seeing their, their eyes light up, you know, the way that years most of when you first saw it 
so I'm just hitting it. The, the big rule of dry brushing is, and there's a lot of techniques, but you want to go against the grain. Uh, typically, the more detail level there is, and by that I don't mean fine, I mean as in depth-wise, um, the wetter the dry brush you want to run because you've got to get down into those crevices, not deeply, you know, unless of course, you know, it's, a, it's your primary coat. But one of the mistakes that people make when they dry brush that I, I do see a lot is they're kind of afraid of it. And when you're running multiple level, levels of dry brushing, the last thing you want to do is not put enough paint down because then if you go to show them how to second coat, third coat, fourth coat, um, they're not going to be able to utilize uh, the base coat that's there and the existing layers that they're putting down effectively. They might only be able to get you know, a 5% difference where they need 25% difference, you know what I mean? So, you've got to, you know, got to teach them to be a little bit bold in the beginning. Um, and that'll pay off big dividends later on because they're going to get much, much, much more variation in their color scheme uh, when they get to those highlight layers. And that's where the real real magic happens um, that's when it that's the big payoff it's hard to get bigger payoffs when you're trying to do it with a first coat the challenge with the first coat is is getting it right if you're doing this the challenge is is you've got to nail that 50 percent dead on and that can be a real problem because you know a lot of your work you uh, you kind of figure out where you are based upon the layering if you understand where I'm, I'm coming from and experienced modelers do and if you're a new modeler and you don't understand it um, after you you do a couple of them you'll, you'll understand where I'm coming from and like I said everybody learns differently. Some people learn by watching, some people learn by listening. Um, some people are very tactile. Being a martial artist, um, you've got to be able to show people how to physically do stuff that their bodies have never done before. And so a lot of times I will physically grab and manipulate and move arms, you know, no, your block's too low, it's too high, it's too far out, it's too far in, um, you're bending your wrist too much when you're punching, you know, you need to straighten it more, it's all angles and stuff like that, and, and painting can be that way. What I find with painting um, is you can't really get across pressure to them so much. But what you can do is you can kind of gauge what their pressure is and then take their brush from them and then get their brush to the level that's appropriate for the pressure that they're using for that level. That's what I did at, uh, at Free Comic Book Day with um, Matt and Ben, two super nice guys that taught me how to play hero clicks. Um, and I think they took it very easy on me. I, uh, I won, but, uh, you know, I think I won because, uh, you know, I was, they were more worried about each other, and they kind of went after each other, and then I kind of ganged up on both of them evenly, and so I just, I lucked out. You know, they were, uh, and they were very good teachers. I was tired out of my skull. I, I couldn't even see straight by the end of the afternoon, but, um... Both just super guys. And I got to play Taskmaster! Yes, he's a villain. Yes, I love villains. If I could be a superhero, I'd be a villain. I, you know, I guess I'm a bad person. Too many years of uh, dungeon mastering. Or game mastering or whatever. But, uh, here you go. This is an example of 50% coverage 
of Joel and Stuff. Stumpy Thumper uh, put up a really cool uh, thing. He said, um, "Take uh, I think he said, take yarn, dip it in glue, and drape it over these. And trust me, if this is going to be in a jungle, I would totally take you up on that. And if you guys want to see a guy who's a phenomenal, phenomenal painter, go check him out. Uh, he's one of my best posters. Um, he, he puts stuff up on virtually everything that I put up. And just just a great all-around guy. He's also really into Will at Epic uh, Epic Fantasy, and uh, I feel very 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 fortunate to have him as one of my uh, subscribers. So I'm gonna let you guys go. That's a, a quick how-to and how to dry brush uh, first layer. See ya.